Hello all, merhaba. This is the way Turkish people welcome you every time you visit their places, their shops. And with this kindness, it's the same kindness with which they are trying to revolutionize all the urban mobility in this massive city of 15.46 million inhabitants. Just to give figures for you to understand how urban mobility is in this city. There are 1.7 million people doing intercontinental trips every day, meaning crossing the Bosphorus Bridge every day from Asia to Turkey and vice versa. There are 14 million trips by public transport every day and 8.5 million private transport journeys done by car. On top of that, 38% of the total transports are done by bus and out of them, 4.5 million with minibuses. Only 2.5% are done by ferries in the water and 7.5% by ferry. With these figures in mind, you can understand that one of the main problems here in Istanbul is environmental pollution and traffic jams. When we see the beautiful Istanbul behind us, we see a huge amount of water that has a lot of ferries. Some of those boats are actually sea taxis. And you may be wondering, what are sea taxis? This is precisely one of the questions we're going to ask to our next guest, which is Gokshe Virgin from uh, the Istanbul Metropolitan Municipality. Gokshe, welcome. Oh, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, so, the Raptor project we're now uh, doing with EIT, uh, you know, it, it, it has to be a rapid project. So, and it has to have the niche problems, you know, uh, to, to, uh, for the startups to solve those problems. So we think about it a lot and we come out that we have problems, very big problems with the taxis. We have three problems with the taxis. Two of them are conventional taxis, and one, like you said, it's sea taxi, which we developed red, you know, uh, recently. So the first one, the problem is the passenger discrimination. So what is that? You know, uh, when the taxis are, you know, hunting for the customers, let's say, uh, sometimes you know they don't like the customers and they don't want to take them. I don't know for they look or if they're tourists or not, you know, so they just separated some people than others. But as Istanbul municipality, we don't want that. Everybody has a right to use a taxi. And uh, however you look is not important at all. And even in short distances, they have to take you because you need that. And we're thinking taxi as a short distance, you know, uh, delivery solution because we have huge metro lines. So you don't need to actually travel so, uh, you know, big distances by taxi. Instead of that, you have to reach from your, you know, home or from your work to the metro station, which is a little bit short distance. So the taxi drivers, they don't want to take you in that case. So that's the first problem. We have a taxi discrimination. The second one, okay, every taxi driver licensed here. We have a regulation and we have to control them, you know, uh, as a metropolitan municipality, Istanbul, uh, we have a regulation on taxi drivers. So uh, we need to be sure that that licensed taxi driver on that moment that you enter the taxi is the one that we're controlling and we licensed it, you know? So we have also a little bit problem about that. What they are doing, what we're facing now is, you know, uh, okay, he got the taxi driver license. Then he will give it to his friend and the friend is, you know, riding it. And we didn't have any control of it. So that's a big problem for us also. So the second challenge niche challenge i can say that the licensing and the driver's licensing and if they are really driving uh, the taxi that they have to so those are the two ones and the third one the raptor project you know uh, wants from us as a niche project uh, niche problem 
the third one is sea taxi, as you said. Mm -hmm. We have very beautiful coastal lines, very beautiful Bosphorus, and you know, you're changing the continents normally, you know, from the road. But we want to encourage people to use actually the sea lines. So we created a, a sea taxi. In Turkish, we call it Deniz taxi. So the problem is we have limited amount of taxis right now. Like uh, at the end of this year, it will be like 55. Mm -hmm. And we have limited amount of piers that you can jump in, hop on, and the other place you hop off. So it needs to be uh, somehow, you know, um, uh, regulated, you know, and it needs to be connected with the other public transportation modes, such as metro, like I said, normal taxi, maybe you will use the normal taxi, then you will jump into the Dennis uh, sea taxi, then you will reach your destination. So we have a little bit problem about uh, those, you know, organizing those things. Uh, so we want entrepreneurs all over Europe and also Turkey, who knows, maybe from the world, to solve our, our those three niche problems. So, and as the Raptor, you know, means that it needs to be rapid. So we want some rapid solution from the startups, you know, and we want to, uh, you know, magnify it through all Istanbul maybe other cities on Turkey because we're facing all over the same problems. Okay, so I think that we should maybe try to now go and see what our colleague Itzel Obregon told us about this sea taxi from one of them. Okay. <laughs> Gokce Birgin from the Istanbul Metropolitan Municipality, thanks a lot for joining us today. Thank you, thank you for your time. Since 2021, the Istanbul Metropolitan Municipality created the two taxis. The sea taxis operate just like regular taxis and they have a fleet of 32 vehicles at the moment. They will have 55 by the end of the year and they also plan to run them electric. And to learn more about what are the, cha the challenges that the city is facing, we're going to interview today Serap Setin Kaya from the Istanbul Metropolitan Municipality. Serap, welcome. Thank you. Serap, one of the first questions could be, having such a massive city, what is the main priority, the main challenges uh, that you are now facing, bearing in mind that we have the vision strategy 2050 just approved a few days ago? Yes, you're right. Our mayor, Mr. Ekrem Memoğlu, announced our uh, vision uh, 2050 uh, a couple of days ago. And he explained uh, a lot of things in terms of traffic, sustainability, resilience. And um, now, uh, in, uh, as an IMM family, we started uh, a new journey towards sustainable and resilient city. Uh, in terms of uh, traffic and in terms of transportation, 
uh, we are we are we are changing our aspect from uh, traffic to uh, active mobility and sustainable transportation modes. So we are expanding our um, a huge uh, ratio of um, uh, ratio ratio of income uh, ratio of budget to our rail system improvement, rail system ins installation. And our aim to get 50% of all transit trips will be uh, by rail systems. This will support our, uh, our sustainable transportation uh, structure, we believe. And uh, as part of this Vision 2050 strategy, you will go on working in urban mobility apart from many other topics related to sustainability. And in these lines, we would like to now learn more about how our partnership is contributing to make the city, the streets of Istanbul, more livable for their citizens and bringing more sustainable m m means of transport for them. Yes, um, we are we are a part of EIT family from the beginning, uh, 2019, and uh, it is a big chance for us. We are very happy to be a part of this family. Uh, we are getting a lot of uh, knowledge from European cities and we are sharing our experiments with them and we are getting our uh, challenge solution together with academics, with institutes, with startups and uh, it's also important we are, uh, we, we, we are uh, adding some additional value to our startups, our ecosystems too. Basically when have a look already at Istanbul and we can already see the results of some of the projects we've already implemented here in the city. We can see sea taxis, we can see many other things, but I would like you to explain to us how are these projects being developed here, what are the results? We, are, we, are, we have been started a few projects with EIT. One of them is our Raptor project. Raptor, in Raptor project, we would like to uh, work with startups. We would like to support them. Uh, we would like to encourage them to solve our niche problems. We uh, determined our three niche problems. The, one of them is taxi discrimination. Taxis are choosing their customers. And the other one is uh, taxi license. It is uh, important for safety, safety of our guests, our citizens. The last one is uh, sea taxi. Sea taxi is a new, uh, new transportation mode in our city. Uh, we started last year and uh, we, uh, in the city we have 40 sea taxi are operating now. But uh, the optimization of the sea taxis are very important for us because uh, our citizens uh, uh, are getting uh, good, uh, uh, good feedback about uh, our new transportation mode. Uh, you can see all around the sea, and we would like to uh, see transportation in our um, may, uh, one of the, our main modes. We would like to improve their ability, their ratio of all uh, transportation modes. It is, it is our uh, most important aim, coming from our SAMP study. Last year we finished our sustainable urban mobility plan. It is the first study of Turkey. It's very important. It's our uh, important uh, documentation. We are following all action of uh, coming from this uh, plan, and uh, we have a lot of uh, challenges determined in our this plan. And we would like to get new innovation solution with EIT family. We are working with industry, academic partners. Uh, EIT is getting this chance for us. It's important for our city, and we are we are very happy to be a part of this family from the beginning of the EIT established. And uh, what are now the next steps? Bear in mind, uh, well, the expectations of the citizens and uh, everything we want to build together towards uh, making uh, the acceleration of the urban mobility more sustainable here in uh, Istanbul. In Istanbul, uh, as everybody knows, traffic is most uh, challenging uh, issues. But uh, if we focus to solve this problem, we cannot serve service to our citizens. We are focusing to build new uh, modes for them. We are aim to Im increase our uh, our uh, our uh, transportation services for them 
And we uh, now we, uh, we are talking with EIT urban mobility families about how can solve our uh, public transportation uh, problems, how can improve our abilities on this area. And um, now, uh, two, two days ago, we made an uh, active mobility section and we learned a lot of things from other cities. They, uh, we show, they show uh, their examples from their city. We, uh, maybe some of them is, uh, can be uh, very good for uh, Istanbul. We can, ex we can implement the same or uh, similar projects. Of course, we have to adapt to our city because each city has their own challenges. So we have to find our own solution. You were mentioning something, a key word, active mobility. Considering that we have uh, citizens here ex expending or maybe wasting 142 hours every year in traffic jams, yes. I think active mobility is definitely a very good uh, catch setup. Kaya from the uh, Istanbul Metropolitan Municipality. Thanks a lot for joining us today. Thank you. <laughs> and if you want to learn more about how is urban mobility here in Istanbul, have a look. So we're closing now three intense days here in Istanbul and I'm very happy to be with our CEO Maria Sabahidis here in Istanbul. Maria, welcome. Hello, Jezebel. So what is your feeling after, after these three intense days? So there have been three very intense days but very much worth it. So we brought together partners from all over Europe here in Istanbul and uh, we are so lucky to have the city of Istanbul as one of our most engaged partners who organize all of this for their fellow partners in the IT Urban Mobility. And we experience the city with all its beauties, but also its challenges in terms of urban mobility. And we also experience how these can be solved with innovative solutions. So we have uh, done a lot of knowledge exchange, uh, sharing of good practices, sharing of innovations in active mobility, in energy and mobility, in sustainable logistics. So all of these areas are challenges for cities. Every city has their own challenge, but what unites all the cities is that they want to make their cities more livable. Indeed, that's the key message, Maria. Cities more livable. Thanks a lot for joining us today. Thank you, Joseph. And for you, stay tuned. More news on urban mobility are coming soon. Bye bye.